Greetings from Dr. Saloni Mistry, a prosthodontist, your general dentist and an academician. I am here to teach you what's good for your dental health, to train you for how you should basically visit a dentist and what questions you should ask for your dentist. And as a prosthodontist, what are the special treatment procedures that we can offer when you've lost a missing tooth, you've lost some part of your oral structure, right from uh, infancy to old age. I'm here to tell you all about what my speciality is, that is prosthodontia. What does prosthodontia or prosthodontics mean? Prosthesis is artificial replacement of what is missing. Now, infancy, we are born with no teeth. And when we have a small child, it could be a possibility that the small child may have some defects and those small childs probably may not have some teeth. So right from a very, very small one or two day year, year old baby, two day, two day baby, we can treat those babies till the time probably you say 100 years of age. Babies are born with cleft lip and cleft palates. We can treat those as well. They are born with some less teeth. We can treat those as well. And then we go to senility, that is old age. Let's begin with the basic form of prosthodontic treatment that with old age, when we lose all our teeth, the first basic form of treatment is complete dentures. So let's begin with the basic form of prosthodontic treatment that is dentures, a pair of dentures, the upper denture and the lower denture. Now normally when you lose all your teeth, Let's say it's no, no age bar, age no bar, 60, 70, 40 sometimes because of bad teeth, you've lost all your dentures. So we begin with the first thing that is complete dentures, upper and lower. So that's the particularly a prosthodontic speciality of making complete dentures. Now, if you have some part of your teeth which are possible and which are there, that means I have few of my teeth which are lost and few of them which are present. Then I would give something which is called as a cast partial denture. Can you see this cast partial denture? It has a metal framework and it, then it has an acrylic with teeth. So this is particularly a plant cast partial denture which is removable again and that's something which is given when some teeth are missing and some teeth are present. Now many of us insist something like fixed. We don't want something which is removable. Now, not every person, not every patient, we can give fixed prosthesis. Cast partials are given in those where the bone are weak, the teeth are weak, they are shaky. And that's why this is more planned instead of removing all the teeth. Now, preservation is the mantra now. I'm not going to tell my patient that just get rid of all your teeth and make a complete denture. I'm going to save as much as possible. So this is a cast partial denture, which is normally given when you have few teeth missing and few teeth present. But if I have just few of my teeth or just one of my tooth, which is missing or it's fractured, then I can give, then I can give something called as a complete crown. In layman, we call it as a cap. So this is a complete crown. This is given when you have a fractured tooth or you have a missing tooth. In case of a missing tooth, you give a three unit fixed dental prosthesis, something which is called layman again is a bridge. So this is where you have the tooth missing and you have a bridge. So these are forms of treatment which are fixed and they are not removable. That's fixed with a medical adhesive. It's called as a dental luting agent or a cement. So that's fixed and that's not something that you can remove. So it's either a bridge which is three unit or it's a single crown which is like a cap. Now these are the different fixed form of treatments. Many a times now we've been asked that the adjacent teeth which are there and they have to be prepared or they have to be made smaller like baby teeth in order to fix a bridge. And I have a single tooth which is missing and I don't want my adjacent teeth to be prepared. I want to safeguard them. Earlier times if we say maybe 20 years back what the conventional procedure was that we used to prep the adjacent teeth, baby teeth and give a bridge as we say because we need that foundation to rest that missing tooth. But nowadays 
since the last two decades we have something which is called as a dental implant now what does a dental implant look like well this is how everybody calls it like a screw this is the dental implant now what does a dental implant do or what is its actual role the dental implant is something which goes inside your bone so if you have a missing tooth as you can see here this can be actually like a screw drilled inside your bone and that gets completely fixed now what's going to happen to this dental implant this dental implant after a few months is going to be surrounded and colored by the bone it's going to be integrated completely by the bone and then it's going to act just like your tooth over which a cap or a bridge can be made so can i say that for all missing teeth i can have dental implants many of the patients now come and say i just want an implant i can pay whatever it takes affordability is not a concern but i want a dental implant is every single case or every single patient a candidate for a dental implant well i may not say a absolute yes or an absolute no you need to have a judicious treatment planning your decision making is de is dependent on a lot of things number 1 the availability of the bone how much of bone i have which is actually going to house my implant my implant is going to be sitting inside that bone and then my bone is going to grow and remodel around it so first thing i need to actually evaluate the width the length and the size and the density of bone number 2 am i good in my health systemically diabetes hypertension osteoporosis premenopausal women all these are not complete contraindications i would say but they are cases which alarm us we have to be careful because in such cases we have to first regulate the health of the patient and it's very very important because my healing my bone is actually dependent on my systemic health so that's something very important another very important factor that we evaluate specifically in the maxillary arch is the sinus now all of us complain of sinusitis pain in the uh, nose pain in and around the cheek sneezing and chronic sinus problems now if you have chronic sinus problems this is how this is your upper arch and this is your sinus inside which is like a hollow entire uh, surrounded by the boundary of the walls of the sinus and that's where your actual sinus problems are so when you have a cold you know that you have pain here now if you are a chronic sinusitis patient then again placing implants closer to the floor of your sinus is going to be a potential danger and that's something that we again need to reevaluate whether how what is the floor of the sinus how much length of bone i have and i don't want to place implants where i have these problems related to the actual anatomy in the mandible that is in your lower jaw it's my nerve that passes see this is the mandibular lower jaw and my nerve passes somewhere here so when my nerve when i have the posterior region i'm placing implants i have to be very careful i cannot be placing implants so close to the nerve that is going to hit my nerve and then i land up in a facial paralysis i don't want that i've come for the replacement of a tooth and i land up with something like numbness and facial paralysis well these are very very important factors that help a dentist a prosthodontist or any implantologist to actually plan what is right for you so understand the implications of the dental procedure don't just demand something just because you've heard it from somewhere understand and talk to your dentist understand the whether you are actually a proper candidate for dental implants and then go ahead